Okay, so when we look at system uh, toxicants versus uh, other toxicants, uh, a systematic toxicant is one that's going to affect the entirety of your body, okay? So when you start thinking about something like a potassium cyanide, that is going to affect a cell's ability um, uh, uh, to, um, uh, to absorb and utilize oxygen. It, 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 uh, uh, that's going to be something that's not unique to any particular organ, but is going to be a systemic effect. Okay? Uh, Target-specific toxicants are going to, uh, as, as I would suggest, go after a particular um, uh, organ or tissue. For instance, when we, uh, we start thinking about the central nervous system, lead is a particular target organ, uh, uh, lead is a particular um, agent for central nervous system development. Um, mercury uh, can be a central nervous system um, toxicant. When we start thinking about classes of chemicals, such as isocyanates, they may affect the, uh, the immune system. Ethanol and acetaminophen, uh, the liver, tobacco smoke, asbestos, ozone, all can affect the, the respiratory tract, and on down. Um, UV light can affect the eyes, various metals can affect the, the kidney, um, and uh, give the example here of um, dibromochloropropane is affecting reproductive development. So what we're looking at is different pathways to manifest toxicity. Some can go throughout your whole body, some will uh, affect specific target organs. What are some of the factors? Again, key slide. The factors are affecting chemical toxicity. So the, uh, the form and the inherent um, chemical activity of something. How reactive is the chemical? How soluble is the chemical? Uh, when we talk about the electronic properties and the polarizability, all of those factors are important. The form of the substance, whether or not the substance is a gas, a liquid, a solid. When you start thinking about the kind of toxicity uh, related to nanotoxicity, nanoparticles, whether those substances are of a certain size and aspect ratio, aspect ratio being the, um, the combination of length and width, uh, that's important to asbestos, that's important to nano uh, substances. So the character of the molecules itself are going to be uh, crucial um, about whether or not it's going to be toxic. Uh, we already talked about dosage and the, um, uh, the amount and time of that dose. Exposure route. So the same substance if, um, if swallowed versus inhaled um, uh, versus rubbed on your skin um, or any other route uh, can have different, different effects. The ability to be absorbed, uh, something that, uh, that can't be absorbed can't cause toxic effect. Uh, the metabolism rate, whether or not you're able to break this down into something uh, that is non-toxic, so deactivation, uh, that's going to affect it. Uh, distribution within the body, again, if it only stays within your digestive system and gets excreted, can't spread to other uh, organs, it's not going to um, uh, be able to cause problem. Excretion rate directly related to that. Presence of other chemicals. This is something that we're going to return to. So. Are you ever exposed to one chemical at a time? No, we're all swimming in a sea of chemicals all the time. What you eat, what you breathe, all of those things can either um, uh, affect things in a, uh, in a positive way from a, um, uh, from a uh, toxicological standpoint or negative. In other words, a toxin can be chaperoned across a biological membrane. We're going to talk a, a lot more about that in just a minute. But simply saying, oh, this substance is toxic or not toxic, isn't always the whole story. 